Now let us look at the question number 2 for the TN set examination. As you can see the question number 2 is from mathematics and I should say it is from calculus. They are saying let f be a function from r to r where r is actually representing the set of real numbers which is defined by this function and then f is option a one to one only option b bijective option c not a function and option d not a bijection now to solve this function uh, first of all you should know what is the difference between one to one function what is a bijection and obviously option c is correct, is actually wrong so you can directly uh, figure it out because it, they are representing a function so not a function is actually saying it is this is completely wrong here but uh, we have to figure out whether it is one to one whether it is bijection or not and if it is not bijection then is it not bijection or whatever so we have to find out these options correct so first of all i'll just give a small idea about one to one function and what is bijection so this paragraph i had taken from uh, uh, this wikipedia so uh, let me give you a brief introduction about injective functions so injective functions are also called as one to one functions so there are two definitions i have given so either you can refer to this slide or you can refer to this slide for the one to one function it says let f be a function whose domain is set x so if you have a f uh, if you have a function okay let uh, f be a function whose domain is set x so x is representing the domain of the function and f is said to be injective provided that for all a and b in x whether f a is equal to f b then a should be equal to b that is f a is equal to f b implies a equal to b so what does it mean what do what do they want to say by uh, this sentence that for the function f if this is representing the domain of the function which is represented by x and this is representing the range of a function which is represented by y now if you take any two instances of this domain for example let us say this instance is representing a now for this instance if you apply this function that is f of a then you should get exactly one image or exactly one element here in the range okay now for let us say if this is the element b now if you want to find f of b now it should have at exactly one element here but it cannot happen that if you have assuming the element numbers element c and if you're applying the function which is uh, f of c then you are going to get the exactly the same element uh, in the range from here okay so then we say the function is injective okay i'll just show it show it to you with an example here now just for example here they are saying this is the function so function is f of x is equal to x square plus 1 and x square plus 2 where they are giving that uh, the function is r to r where this r is representing the domain of the function and this r is representing the range of the function now for this function uh, can you simplify it furthermore so if we, let us try to simplify it simplify it more so it can be done as x square plus 2 minus 1 upon x square plus 2 now this can also be written as 1 minus 1 upon x square plus 2 so this is exactly the same function the only thing is that i just try to solve it furthermore so that uh, we can solve the problem in an easier fashion now the first is whether this function is one to one so first case is whether it is one two one or not okay for that case what we'll be doing is we'll be giving some values to this function fx we'll be giving some values to x now for this set of values we are going to see can we um, do we have two different images in the range here okay let me show it to you uh, let us say in case of x if i try to put the value which is one so what will happen so in everywhere where we have x just put this value one so we are going to get one plus one upon one plus two okay so which can also be represented by two by three so you can also put the values here again you are going to get two by three only now this is the case when we assume that value of x is equal to one now if let us say let the value of x is equal to minus one so we have f of minus one is uh, this minus one square plus one upon minus one square plus two which is going to give us the value 2 upon 3 
so that means to this function f to this function f if we give a value 1 or if we give a value minus 1 in both the cases we are getting exactly the same value which is 2 by 3 now because we are getting exactly the same value which is 2 by 3 that is why this function is not 1 to 1 because here there are uh, two elements for which we are getting same value in the range of the function okay now that is why we can say the function is not at all one to one correct now second case is uh, we have to check whether the function is bijective or not so what is the definition of a bijective function uh, for a function the function is bijective if it is one to one and onto so if you have one to one and onto or one to one correspondence uh, simply saying uh, uh, this is also called a surjective as you can see so we have uh, surjective so we have one to one is injective and uh, on to is surjective so if a function is bijective for that it has to be one to one as well as on to so both the things should be there correct now from here well uh, you can just clearly see that it is not one to one so obviously it will not be bijective but let me for ex explanation purposes let me also check whether it is on to or not correct so uh, on to says that uh, a sub subjective function is a function whose image equal to its codomain image is equal to its codomain equality of function f of domain x and codomain y is a subjective if for y every y in y there exists at least one x in x okay so where this is representing the domain and this is representing the range correct uh, let me explain to you with an example uh, whether it is uh, on to or not so let we all know the function is defined from r to r in that case so as the function is defined from r to r so we can assume any values here which is from r so uh, we know that as the function fx is equal to 1 minus 1 upon x square plus 2 so that is the value that we found out here now if you take any value of x take any value of s take take any value of s any value of x this will always be less than one this can never be greater than one this will always be less than one because of this particular case okay so because of this particular case this will always be less than one so you can see for above uh, uh, above uh, you know uh, the definition of onto functions uh, if we take the values of x is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 uh, and so on, so there is no image, right? So hence the function is not at all on to, right? And that is why this function is not on to, hence uh, it is not bijective. Uh, option C, we already defined it is not, it is wrong. So correct answer to this question is option number D, which is saying it is not a bijection. It is not at all bijection, okay? I hope that you understood this problem. Now, let us look at the question number uh, 3 here now question number 3 is saying there are 38 different time periods during which a class at university can be scheduled if there are 677 different classes then how many rooms will be needed now this problem is actually a very simple problem uh, you just need to understand what concept are they asking now here they are clearly asking do you know the pigeon hole principle pigeon hole principle now if you don't know what is the pigeon hole principle just go to, uh, go to our lecture and try to study the pigeon hole principle here so pigeon hole principle says uh, here uh, if you just convert the same problem according to the pigeon hole principle they are saying that we have 677 pigeons and uh, we have uh, 338 holes so if you convert the same problem just go through my lectures or our lectures from pigeon hole principle you understand this topic clearly uh, you understand this topic well so here we have at least how many classrooms are required so at least it will be 677 divided by 38 so there should be at least 18 rooms to solve this problem so correct answer for this question is option number a which is 18 okay now next is question number four they are saying a club has 25 members the number of ways to choose four members of the club to serve an executive council is now you can see that in this particular case uh, since the order of choosing the numbers is not relevant okay so offices are also not differentiated uh, let me write it down so in this case the order 
of choosing the numbers is not relevant is not relevant why because relevant because offices are not differentiated offices are not differentiated thus a combination we can use therefore we can use the concept of combination the concept of combination in combinatrix combinations hence uh, this form uh, this problem can be solved by using this because we have to choose four members out of 24 members here so it can be written as 25 c 4 we have we have total of 25 members out of those 25 we just have to select four members so it can be written as 25 c 4 which can be written as 25 factorial divided by 4 factorial into 2 factorial so this is 25 into 24 into 23 into 22 into 21 factorial divided by so actually this is 21 factorial okay so divided by uh, 4 into 3 into 2 into 21 factorial okay so this can be cancelled and these values can be cancelled by this so this can be written out as 25 into 23 into 22 uh, which can be written as 12650 i have already calculated this value so the correct answer to this question is option number b which is 12650 i hope that you understood this one and now let us move on to our next section now let us check out this question number five and it is a very very easy question as you can see here they are saying the number of bit strings of length 10 contains at least three ones and at least three zeros so they are saying that we have a string here which is having a length of 10 so length 10 correct so it can be one one zero one 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 zero one one zero something so one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten so there is total of 10 bits so with these 10 bits uh, there are two raised to power 10 strings are possible so we have two raised to power 10 different strings are possible but they are saying that the strings that we need they have at least three ones at least three ones should be there and at least three zeros should be there so the strings which are having less than three ones and less than three zeros that is not at all acceptable okay so let us first find out the strings which are having at least um, uh, three ones strings containing containing at least three ones okay so what are those strings so if it contains if it contains zero zero ones so how many strings will be there there are 10 c zero strings will be there now if it contains exactly one ones so there will be 10 c uh, one strings will be there if it contains exactly uh, two ones two ones so it will be uh, 10 c two strings will be there so in total it will be 10 c zero plus 10 c one plus 10 c two so these are the strings these are the strings these are the strings having having less than three ones okay because they are saying at least three ones should be there so these are the strings which are having less than three ones in the same way we cannot find out the, we can also find out the strings which are having less than three zeros so strings having less than less than three zeros correct so it will be the same exactly the same value so which will be 10 c 0 plus 10 c 1 plus 10 c 2 now in the question they ask that the strings should have at least three ones and three zeros so for this uh, particular question so correct answer will be the total number of strings total number of strings minus strings having less than three ones strings having less than three ones minus strings having less than three zeros okay so it will be total number of strings that are possible are 2 raised to power 10 minus strings having less than 3 ones they are 10 c 0 plus uh, 10 c 1 plus 10 c 2 minus the strings having less than 3 zeros they are 10 c 0 plus 10 c 1 plus 10 c 2 so if you add it up these values will be 2 raised to power 10 minus 2 into um, 
10 c 0 which is 1 plus 10 c 1 which is 10 plus 10 c 2 it can also be calculated as 1024 minus 112 which is actually 912 so there are total of 912 strings which are satisfying the following condition so correct answer to this question is option number d now i hope that you enjoyed the solution and these uh, solutions are really good i mean uh, you found the solutions better for your understanding so if you like the lectures then you can just hit the like button subscribe to our channel and if you want the complete video lecture series for the, ex uh, the complete exam preparation uh, then just call us on the numbers given below or you can also whatsapp us okay so thank thank you for watching this video now let us move on to the question number six